Hi, Phil Nice here. Welcome to tutorial number six in this Jazz School series on soloing. In the last tutorial, we took a look at harmony guided improvisation, uh, where we worked over a single harmony um, of C seventh, C mixolydian, no changes. In this tutorial, we will be extending um, this with more harmony guided improvisation, but this time we'll be working over a sequence where there are some changes. Now, if some of the exercises in that previous tutorial over one harmony seemed difficult, then it may well be that this one seems daunting. Um, as in one harmony, uh, there's not even any changes, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, but don't worry, it's not really quite like that. There are challenges with improvising over a single harmony um, that are not necessarily present when you're uh, improvising over changes and that's because um, the single harmony uh, is a neutral thing uh, whereas changes give us a certain musical impetus so in some ways things get a little easier the music can actually drive you forward and give you something where the single harmony you had to do it all yourself so uh, not to be too daunted and if I gave the impression that it was that way around then um, I take it back it's uh, there are certain things in this tutorial that certain things will get actu will actually get easier. I promise. Okay, in the last tutorial we concentrated on soloing over a single harmony, um, and it was this C mixolydian mode, a C seventh chord, and what we had to work with here was um, the notes of the chord here. Uh, degrees 1, 3, 5 and the flattened 7th on the scale and we had these notes, the chord notes um, the four of them really as the safest notes, the safe havens that we could always come back to uh, and then we have some other notes uh, in between where there's a larger tension and then we also have all of the, the octave um, in theory uh, where the weightings and the tensions are very different the difficulty with working over a single harmony with no changes is that it's a formless thing. It's got structure uh, in this direction as a cross section here. Um, but in, in time we have no movement in form, it's just the same thing. So we actually, it's easy to solo over in, th in one way um, because we could just land on our C, our first degree of the scale or our our three, uh, third degree of the scale, E, and we could generally just stay there. So it's easy to play a solo over, but it's difficult to play an interesting solo over, because an interesting solo in a melodic approach is using tension, is creating something, um, and melody also needs form along this axis in time to be interesting. So we were, we're quite challenged um, in that we're having to create all of that movement and all of that tension ourselves as soloists when we've only got one harmony to work with. Now when we start working with um, harmony changes we'll have something moving uh, in time that we're working over so it won't be just the soloist creating all of the movement. In a sense that makes soloing easier but it brings some other challenges with it as well. Right in this video we're going to be working over a three-step blues. Now a three-step blues is something you can meet in blues music. Um, you could also hear it in something like rock and roll, uh, very widely used. It's closely related to the uh, traditional jazz blues, but it's simply built up over three steps. And uh, what I mean by three steps is three harmonic steps. You've got these three different harmonies here, um, and they are on these degrees of the scale. We start with C7, that's the first degree of the scale. We go up to a four for one bar. Two bars on first step of the scale again. 
Then we go up to four. We're on there for two bars. Then back home again. Back to step one. Then we come to step five. Step four. Then back to step one. Last bar is a turnaround. Could have different forms, but I just chose to put it on a five. And that is the repeating 12 bar sequence that we have on the, the three step blues. Now, a characteristic of the three step blues is that the mode changes for each different harmony. We're coming on four now, and we're coming back to one. Now, we've got when I got the one, the first step of the, of the scale. Here we've got a mixolydian. Now when we come up to the four, we've got a Dorian scale. If we're looking at it from the point of view of the root, going back to the mixolydian there. It's a civil change of the scale. On the five, we've got the Ionian, which is the basic major scale. Now I could talk at great length about what these modes are all about, but suffice it to say that what is happening here during the three-step blues is that certain degrees of the scale are flattening and neutralizing again. There we have the flattened seventh. It, it neutralizes here, you can see it up there, in the G seventh chord, and then it flattens again. So we've never got the same mode um, between any two of our changes here. That means that's going to have a, a, a uh, significance for the tension in our soloing because we don't really have any safe havens where we can just stay there. I think probably the safest note in here is the fifth, G. We can pretty much stay there. We could stay there all the time. Wouldn't be a very interesting solo, but that's that's a sort of safe haven we can come back to. Not even the tonic, not even the first degree of the scale is very safe here. That's going to clash rather nastily with our with our um, harmony on, on G, uh, although we could use it over the others. So um, the harmony moving around us is going to push us. So it's not just the soloist doing all the pushing, as was the case with the, the single harmony. Now we've got a changing form around us, um, according to this 12-bar uh, sequence. And that sequence is going to be changing in time. And the things that are going to be changing in time are going to be pushing us. You can't hang on that third degree of the scale the whole way. You're going to have to change it. It's going to flatten. And things are going to push you in certain directions. Now we could think about this very technically, um, but I've warned against that. Um, this is not the content I'm looking at here. This is simply the framework. We've got a lot of possibilities, um, apart from just doodling around on these notes. Um, we're going to work melodically. Um, but the reason why we can't just sit on one safe haven all the way is because it's changing around us. And bearing that in mind, I'm going to show you some exercises we can do with the track over the three-step blues. Now over our single harmony, our exercise was to create movement. We're going to do the opposite now, with the changes happening around us. Uh, we're going to choose a degree of the scale, um, let's say the tonic, and we're going to stand still. And this is about feeling where the tension is. So far, so good. We're nicely in harmony all the way. We can just stay there. It feels safe. But do you hear where the tension comes in? That's gone again. Okay, this notes in tension when we get to stage five of the scale, scale our G seventh. So it's going to push us. Over F, we can still use it. Okay, very simple function of soloing here. Staying around on one note and seeing what happens when it pushes. Let the harmony push you. Still staying on our C. Okay, this time I'm going to take the third uh, degree of the scale. Now we're clashing. Now we're in harmony again. Clashing again here. Okay, this is what not to do. <laughs> clashing, sort of. Clashing. 
home again. Okay. How do we feel our way here? Where do we want to go? So we're flattening that third degree. Flattening it again now. Now it's E flat. Back to E. And here we can stay. Play between degrees three and five. Just do the same thing again. Between degrees three and five of the scale. Expanding it out just out from here. Bring in some other degrees of the scale and some chromatic notes. So, in a way, you have some safe havens to come back to if you know where to use them. Your five you can use everywhere. G fits on everything. Also over your four. And we gradually just expand it. just playing licks, you've got to feel what's happening around you. I'd say, not licks, but routines. You have certain routines. You know you can do certain things in certain places. But not just to keep repeating these routines exactly in the same way as if they were licks, but to use them melodically. On that note, or on these notes, catch you later.